In this video, we are going to have a look at the Cisco ACI model and how to apply that model to a real Cisco ACI fabric step by step. We will first configure the ACI physical model which includes the switch selector profile, the interface selector profile and the respective policies and finally configure the domain with the corresponding VLAN pool and call it in to an AAEP or attachable entity profile. Then we will configure the ACI logical model by configuring a tenant, VRF and bridge domain. Finally, we create an application profile containing an EPG for testing and do the basic verifications. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome to Dr. Networks. My name is Ahmed Mukhtar and today we are going to be configuring a trunk port on the ACI sleeve switch only. Uh, but it's gonna take some doing, man. And all of you guys who are here know that ACA is not that easy. It takes a little bit time to grasp all this model and all. Um, so that is exactly what we're going to be doing. Here's my lab. We have a two leaf nodes here. Um, one is 101 and one is 102. And there's a spine over there. It's already, uh, you know, like both the leaves are already added to the fabric. If you want a separate video on that, that's pretty easy actually, uh, but I can make a separate video on that, no problems. And you can also do that on the simulator as well if you need to. But uh, uh, what we're gonna be doing here is we are going to be configuring on Leaf 101, a trunk port only on a specific interface, uh, Ethernet 1 slash 32, um, going towards a layer 3 switch which is connected both ways actually to leaf 102 and 101 but we for this lab we're go just going to be configuring only one port on the leaf uh, switch um, leaf 101 that, uh, that I'm gonna be, be making a trunk port and on the downside I have my L3 switch, legacy L3 switch. Don't you just love them when you see them? That's so easy to configure. Just go there, assign some VLANs, um, make SVI interfaces, just just, just hit the uh, uh, interface trunk, uh, interface mode trunk here, and we're good to go. So it starts trunking by default, but in ACI, that's a different story. So most of the time, I mean, all like 99% of the time we will be on ACI. I'm not going to actually go into this L3 switch. I will show you that, but I think already that these VLANs have been configured and uh, don't need to be configured anymore. So anyways, um, this is the lab topology and the ACI model that we are going to be configuring on the ACI is this. Most of you have a look and feeling of this ACA model and some of you have an understanding a little bit. But the problem with most of us is that, especially me, I gotta put myself in that, adding these pieces together and coming from a legacy network point of view, it was really hard and it still is hard sometimes for me to actually troubleshoot and stuff all this. Because, you know, like, all this is not us. We're network engineers, right? So we, we were just going in and configuring stuff on the CLI. But this is top-notch different, okay? So this is the ACA model, and, the, and this model is actually divided into two sub-models, which, which are called ACA logical model, this one on the left side, and ACA physical model on the right side. Now, physical model, uh, basically, in, in the physical model, we actually go ahead and select our switches, um, see what policies need to be applied there, select our interfaces on which some interface policies need to be applied. And then we have this doodad called AP that we bind those uh, uh, policies. And then we have a domain, and VNAN pool, and the domain actually gets uh, linked to the logical model, which, uh, which get links to EPG actually directly. So first thing is the switch profile. Now it's in its core, this switch profile is there only for, I mean, not only, but specifically for selecting the ACI switches. So we're here at the APIC right now. Now let's log into this APIC controller and start configuring stuff, huh? Just a second. Okay, uh, I'm also going to be showing you CLI of that L3 switch that we saw in the topology and uh, the leaves as well. So 
they are going to be in the picture as well. So straight off the bat, you can see that it's saying that you don't have enough controllers. So it should be three controllers at least actually for production. They don't recommend this at all. Uh, anyways, we are in a test lab environment, so it's fine for us. We're just going to do it. So um, first off, what are we going to do is we're going to configure the switch profile, right? So for that, you have to go into fabric and go into access policies. And then as we're configuring the switch profile, so we have to uh, drill, uh, drop down the switch menu. And you know, ACA contains two kind of leaves, right? So one is, uh, sorry, two kind of nodes, leaf, which is in spine. Normally, I don't see anything happening on the spine until and unless you are doing some sort of remote leaf kind of infrastructure and that it's too, too high end stuff. We're not discussing high end stuff right now. We're discussing the normal stuff or the normal guy to understand all this. Now, in the switch section, you have these leaf switches, just click that and you can see the profiles. So this is basically this thing, switch profile. Now this is uh, one thing I forgot to tell you that, uh, hang on, let me just go back to the slide. Now I have uh, put stars and this exclamation mark over here saying that these fields are mandatory if you want to configure ACI. Um, they must be there. If they're not, something will be broken. Uh, other things, are more or less optional, but they could well be mandatory in some cases. So we'll discuss some cases on the fly once we go. So let's jump into the switch profile, okay. So in the switch profile, uh, there's nothing right now, okay. So I just right click this and create a leaf profile and I just name it. So I'll just name it like a switch underscore profile. I'll name it the same way this model is presented. Like I'll try to do that. Okay. Maybe I'll need some naming conventions and all, but uh, anything in caps will be done by me, hopefully. So switch profile, this is the name of the profile. Now what this profile done next, uh, does next is that you see over here, let's go back to that main slide, uh, selector slide. Okay. The other thing that is mandatory is the selector. Switch selector. So this thing, what, what it does is that it needs to select the switches on which you do want to do the configuration. So if you look at our topology right now, what is our goal? Our goal is basically to configure leaf 101, right? So our target is 101. So we need to select that switch. Okay. Uh, here we go. Okay. Back. Now, Leaf selector. So just hit on the plus icon and I'll call it leaf selector. Okay, I'll just name it to 101. Okay, because I'm selecting only one switch, so I'll just name it 101. That means that I'm selecting the leaf node 101. Okay, so drop down all the leaves that have been added to the fabric, you will be seeing them. Okay. So just click on 101 and do an update. Now there's also an option for policy group. Now, I'm gonna show you that, but it's not needed. And uh, in my production environment, we don't have any policy groups, to be really honest. They're there for a reason, obviously, but we don't configure them. And the reason being that is that we don't need those switch-based policies. I'll, sh I'll show you what the policies are actually. But let's first hop on to the next slide because uh, before we hop on, policy group doesn't have a star, ni neither does the policy, okay? So this is not mandatory. So you can, uh, you can if you want, you can do it later if you, if you need to. But there's a lot of things that ACA actually pu puts in front of you, right? So this is in itself a problem. Too much information is coming on me. So to understand that, it's really hard. Anyways, um, now after the profile has been created, you can click next, leaving the policy group as it is. Uh, you can actually, uh, you know, bind it later. I'll show you how. So if you put, put, uh, click next, and now what it's saying is that what are the interface selector profiles? Now, if you look back to the design, uh, the, the the model, you can see that uh, this switch profile eventually 
has to get binded to an interface profile, right? So it's giving you the option to do it right now, but we won't do it because it's, it, it gives you a lot, a lot of options. Now, if there is a mandatory option, it won't let me finish it. And you can see it's uh, already blue, so I can hit and finish. But eventually I have to go in and put up the interface profile here once I've created it. You can actually create it from here as well if you hit the plus icon and just go and create it. So it's kind of like nested you, if you want to, but I don't want to get, get you guys confused. It's fine. We'll do it as the model does, okay? So I'll just finish it right off here. Okay, so the switch profile, the first thing is done. Now, if you look at it, if I just, I just clicked on it and it showed me what is the name of the profile. It's showing me what leaf have I selected. The blocks actually is the leaf switch. Okay, uh, it's referring to the leaf switch. The blocks, I think pr pretty much why they have this naming convention because the blocks can be maybe for the spine as well, but not, not, not really sure about that. I'm not going into that, but um, they, they use this term block. Now in this, you also see associated interface selector profile. So th this is that interface profile. And the policy group section that we left off is over here. So you can actually go ahead and select a policy if you want to. Now, let me show you what the policies are just to show you. I'm not configuring any. So if, if I hit create, you can see spanning tree policies, BFT policies, and whatnot. A lot of policies are there which are generic to the switch, like not generic, like for the switch, not for the interfaces per se, but for the switch as a whole. So this is what you can configure and th that's pretty much it. So it will get applied to all those switches that you select in the blocks section. By the way, you can uh, select uh, like this as well, I think, yeah. Yeah, if you have a range, you can do a range and you can also use comma, I believe. Yeah, you can do that. So it can have multiple switches, right? So this is the main concept. Just updating it again. Don't know why, but I am. Anyways, so by now, if you look at this model, we have done this part. The switch profile is done. Now we're moving on to the interface profile. Moving on to the interface profiles over here. So this is the interface profile that we need to create. Um, the switch profile actually calls in the interface profile. That's already, I mentioned that. And then you need to select the interfaces. Uh, this is changed actually. I forgot to actually mention that this was important. So I had to put a star here and the star here as well because without the interface selector, you can't apply policy groups and obviously you can't bind the profile. So let's have a look, how does this work? Now in our lab, we know, oops, sorry. Uh, in our lab, we know we, ha we have got the switch selected. Now it's time for this selection of this interface, okay? And with this interface, what we'll say is we'll turn the CDP on and off and, and check on the ACA leaf, is it working or not? Okay, so all these policies get applied straight off the bat. You do not need to have the full ACA model, model working, not even the physical model fully working, but just as you uh, select the nodes and select the interfaces, the policies do get applied at the spot. So let's check this out, huh? So let's go to the interface, the, the same place, um, fabric, access policies, and go into interfaces. And uh, just the nodes are spine and leaves, so we'll select the leaves on which our uh, like servers or anything does connect on. And we have a profile section, just similar to the profile section of the switches over here. So if you drop down, there's nothing over here. Okay, so it's empty. So let's create a leaf profile. So I'll just name it leaf underscore profile and click on submit. And now it is asking for me to select the interfaces, but we'll do that uh, just now. Let us just create the profile first. So I'm just creating the profile. And if you double click on this profile, what you see is interface selectors, right? Now, if we, we go to our diagram, let's go to that draw, drill down one. Okay, interface profile is created and it will be binded to the switch profile. Let's just bind this profile to the switch, switch profile first, okay? 
step by step. So there's no option here to actually bind this profile to the switch. So what we have to do is go into the switches section on the leaf and uh, see our profile over there. So the profile of the switch has the option over here, as you can see, associated interface selected profiles. Right, click on uh, sorry, click on that, and here is the profile that we just created. Okay, so here you have to call it right. So that is done. So we've done this switch, uh, this step. Now we need to select interfaces, then the policy group, and then bind it to an attachable access port. Now, uh, now what are we doing here? Is we are selecting interfaces and applying some policies. What kind of policies you might be thinking? Let me just show you what kind of policies I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the VLANs and all. I'm talking about CDP, LDP, MACSEC, uh, port security, things like that, okay? That are based on the port, okay? Um, so to go into the, okay, okay uh, interfaces, leaf, leaf interfaces, uh, profiles and the leap profile is here. Now, if I want to bind, if we go back again, we need to have the interface selector. So if I want, if I want the interface selector, I, I just have to add it over here. It will show me, okay, port selector. So I'll say um, one colon 32. So it's, it's representing as like, because it doesn't take slashes, I think doesn't take that right so yeah it's not allowed in ECI so I'll, I'll just put it like this and the interface ID you can uh, see down below you the examples are given actually you can put ranges same like a node um, in ACI I just show you the node I also showed you that you can actually go ahead and select the nodes like with hyphens and commas and all this you can also do that so for our example it's only one port so one slash 32 now, um, interface policy group. Now, this is we need. We can create it over here actually if you want to, but let me just elaborate uh, and uh, show you what all these are uh, real quick. So we've just selected this interface. Click on submit. Okay, so the interface is selected, but no policies have been applied. Let me just take you to that switch, that ACA switch, real quick. I just go to the leaf one zero one admin password okay so now you can you see uh, let's see show CDP interface face Ethernet 1 slash 32 okay so if I look into that interface just one second okay if I look into that interface I can see the CDP is enabled and that is by default it is disabled. Oh, sorry <laughs> it's disabled and by default yes it is disabled okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a policy right now and see if that works um, okay so first of all before apply any policies you have to see what kind of policies ACA gives you actually the ability now there can be cases uh, where you have multiple interfaces, okay, and multiple uh, leaf profiles. But let me show you the policy first of all. Now the policy types, they've segregated the policy types because, uh, you know, like different interface types need different interface policies. For example, I'll just show you one example, like leaf access port policy. Now if I were to click on create leaf access port policy, I can see, uh, CDB policies, LDP, STP, L2 interface policy, like a lot of policies, interface level are there, backsec and all. So what I can actually do is I can uh, uh, click the drop down and uh, by default there are some um, you know policies created. These are the ones that we created, I think, I'm not, if, if I'm not sure. So, or you can create the policy on your own. You can just click this and it'll take you through the policy creation section. Like you want um, PDB to be enabled or disabled and give it a name. So here we already have a name. So we can enable or, oh, sorry, enable or disable the CDU policy. Link level policies are like uh, what speed, auto negotiation, the duplex and all. 
what do you want to set on those specific interfaces that you select actually in the selector uh, profile. So whatever I create and bind it to this profile, all those policies will be applied to those specific interfaces that I call here. You remember we can do ranges, right? So we can do that and we can add multiple interfaces and multiple policies, like different policies. Like maybe I want a specific policy on a specific interface so I can do that as well. So it gets really granular. But for now, um, just one thing I want to clear this out that now if you, if you look at the port channel policies, now in them you will see a little bit difference because it will show you almost the same but there's one policy that is different that is the port channel policy. Now we all know that uh, in port channeling we, we, we know that we must have uh, lag P normally or, or a static port channel whatever the case may be. Normally lag P is the case in our environment so a lot of servers are using lag P, sorry LSAP or lag P for the port channeling negotiation and all. So um, we must have lag P active. Now a normal interface access policy doesn't have that uh, policy drop down because it doesn't need it, right? So in our case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this policy, okay? So I'm just creating a policy for, I'll just say one, just for uh, like our sake of this lab, I'll say INTF policy, P-O-L-I-C-Y, okay. So I'm, I just said, I'm just I'm just uh, naming this. You can name it a generic uh, the way you want it, whatever you want to do with that, like the naming convention, obviously. So if I leave everything at default and hit submit, it's not gonna do anything on the port right now. Let me just open up this uh, leaf. Choose CDP neighbor. So it's disabled, right? So CDB is disabled by default. Now, if I go into this uh, profile again, sorry, I haven't actually binded, right? Yeah, this is the problem. Now I have selected the interface, but I forgot to bind the, inter uh, the, the policy, right? So this is, this is the problem actually. This is uh, the interface policy group. This is where you bind it. So I'll just click on it and it'll show interface policy. Just select and then uh, click submit and submit changes and just give it give us a minute i'll just check in a minute now before actually heading towards uh, the leaf switch cli first we have to see what is the policy that we applied so nothing right so there's nothing actually we, we uh that we have applied so we just head over to the switch and see okay there is nothing. So CDB, if you show CDB interface, Ethernet 1 slash 3, 2, nothing is applied. Let's just change this CDB state to on. And click on submit. I hope it works now. Yeah, it, it's, it sure seems like it'll work uh, based on what I've seen there. Okay. Beautiful. So you can see that CDB is now enabled. Now this indicates that the policies are being applied properly. That this also indicates that your binding is accurate. Like your interface profile, the selected interface, and the policy group have been applied to the interface, but it should also be binded to the switch profile. If it's not, it won't show up on node 101. Like what I'm seeing on the leaf switch, right? If there's any problem between the interface binding and the leaf switch, then it won't have shown me this uh, this change in the policy. So this is pretty much it on these two parts, interface profile and switch profile. Now it's time for the AEP, the domain and the VLAN pools. Okay, so now it's time to configure the VLAN pool, domain and the attachable access entity profile. Now, if uh, we go towards, um, just put that down. Okay, so we go into pools and we go into VLANs. Now we right click that and create a VLAN pool. Now I'll call it only VLAN pool for, you know, like um, it's a lab so I can name it whatever I want, but you name it like prod pool or UAD pool, wh whatever pool or VLANs you have for your environment, you can name that in that regards. Now there are two options of the allocation mode, dynamic allocation and static allocation. Static, what we will be doing right now, 
because the dynamic actually what it does it's for the vmm integrations and all so we're not going to go into that i'll try to make a lab on that as well but for now it's only static allocation so uh now we hit on the plus icon for the encapsulation blocks uh, basically what the, what the vlan ranges will be so in our lab what do we have like we have one second we have three VLANs, out of which we will test only one, but still we have three VLANs to create. Triple one, triple one, two, uh, double one, two, and double one, three. So going into the ACI, I'll select static location from here. Um, I'll say one, 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 and towards range one, one, three. So these three VLANs will be our in our VLAN pool. So we will be able to call them um in the apg eventually and tang them so right so selected as internal role is internal and click on ok now uh, if you want only one vlan you can specify the range as triple one and then specify like this so this will be allocated only one vlan but for now we're allocating tr three vlans here okay so click on ok and submit so we got the VLAN pool created. So this part, once again, this part is done. This VLAN pool part is done. Now we are going on towards the domain part. Now the VLAN will be binded to a domain. Now what is a domain actually? Is that how will uh, ACI treat those uh, end hosts? Now, if you look at this diagram, there, there are four types of domain, but we'll be focused on only two types, uh, which is the physical domain and the virtual domain, just to give you an understanding what it is. Like if you have an ACA fabric and you have one interface connected to a bare metal server, um, that will be treated as a physical domain because the bare metal doesn't have any understanding of the ACA fabric, right? So for, for, for the ACI, that will be a physical domain. And f and this is another um, um, representation of any uh, of physical domain. Like people think that if you connect an ESXi server, then it becomes a virtual domain. Then th and that is not true. The reason is that that uh, if you don't have any vSwitch inside of the ESXi servers via vCenter, then there is no. I would say, you know, like. The ACA doesn't know about what's happening in internally, okay? So in that point, also, it will be considered as a physical domain. And this will be our case, actually. Our switch will be like a bare metal server, or you can call it an ESXi server, anything that can tag VLANs and doesn't have the understanding of the ACI fabric. So uh, the virtual domain, just to give you a heads up what it is, is that if you have a vSwitch inside of the ASX server, like APIC actually controls the, the port groups and everything inside of the ASX servers via vCenter, then only it's called a virtual domain and there that dynamic VLAN pool can come in handy because it will dynamically assign VLANs and you know um, it will create the VLAN on the leaf as well. But we're not looking into the virtual domain. We're looking at the physical domain. So that is why um, we will create a domain called a, uh, a, a physical domain, actually, in our lab. One thing about AAP and the domains I have to specify over here, like there can be a case, like I have a leaf that has three interfaces, and th one interface is going on to the bare metal, one is also going on to an ESXi, and one is going on to words. A vCenter based hypervisor in which I have uh, the ACA has a kind of control on it. Now, if I select all these three ports uh, and bind them, uh, uh, I mean, like bind them in the policy group, not in the policy group, I select them via the interface selector over here up there and define a policy group. Policy group, if I were to show you, can only bind to only one AAP. Now the thing is, the, the, the reason why we have an AAP is that policy groups can be signed only to one thing. Like if, if the AAP was not in the picture, 
we would be only defining it for only one domain, like a physical domain. But maybe in, in our case, we have three ports like this and we've selected them. Now we need something that can have multiple domains. So the domains can be multiple. That is why the domain is called towards the AEP. And the AEP is then called towards the policy group. I hope you understand that concept. A little bit tricky, but yeah, it is there. Okay, so let's go on and create the domain. So for the domain creation, we have to go into the physical and external domains. And I'm going to create a physical domain. We have a by default domain already created, but let's create a new one. Let's create a domain, like a physical domain. So I'll just name it physical domain. And the VLAN pool needs to get mapped to it. Okay, so the VLAN pool is selected here and the static pool is assigned. Now you can also attach uh, the profile over here, the AP over here, but we will go and create it separately just so we have an understanding where it is residing and how we can configure it. So we click on submit. So this part is now done. Sorry, oh, let me just go to that slide. So this part is done now, domain and VLAN pools. The VLAN pools have been binded to the domain. Now the domain is going to get binded to the AAP. Now if you want to find the AAP and you're not really sure where to navigate, you can actually go and go, go over the search bar and type in AAT, attachable access entity profile, and just hover over it. It, sh it should show you the location. So it's showing me you go into access policies, then policies, then global, and there you will find it. So access policies, policies, and then global, you can see the attachable access entity profile is there. So let's create that profile, create the entity profile. I'll say AAEP. Um, then we know that from our design that, okay, the domain and the VLAN pool need to be binded to it. Uh, so let's bind it. Uh, here you can see we can bind the domains over here. So just click on it. We just created this physical domain. Just select this, click on update, and I'll show you the VLAN tags. So click on next and the association to interfaces we will do on the profile section. So finish. So it's finished right now, but we haven't yet binded it to uh, a policy group. So what we can do is we can go into, um, where did we create that policy for the interface? Okay, interfaces, leaf interfaces, and the policy groups. We created one policy group. There it is. Now here, um, we enable the CDP if you remember. And then there should be uh, attachable entity profile linked here. So I just click that and it'll show me the AAP profile that I created. Select that and click on submit and submit changes. So now what has happened is that if I go back to the slides, the physical model has been deployed successfully. Now it's time for the logical model to be deployed. The tenants, the VRS, the bridge domains, application profiles, EPGs, all that. Once we do that, we will bind the domain, the physical domain to an APG. And then we will tag the, that interface, which is over here on the leaf one slash 32, uh, leaf one through one and its port is one slash 32. Okay, so we are done with the ACI physical model now. We configure all that stuff and it's working. Now, it's time for the ACA logical model, which is on the left side of uh, this diagram, this flow. And we are gonna configure, first of all, the tenant, then the VRF, the bridge domain, and a subnet also we will create, even though it's, it's not mandatory to create the subnet, but as we need to do the testing from the core switch, we need to do some pings and all, we need to have a subnet uh, from the same uh, subnet, <laughs> from the same subnet. What am I saying? So, but I'm saying some net uh, as VLAN triple uh, one. So 10.1.21.25 something, 253 we'll be using. Um, okay, so to drill down a little bit, this is my, a much better uh, you know, drill down view for this. So first of all, we create the tenant in which we have the VRF and the and, and the domains and all. So let's go ahead and create it. It's very easy. The tenant is basically a logical 
the construct like it has all these elements as you see for for i mean it's 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 logically very separate that means two tenants do not actually talk to each other so tenants are different so it's it's a multi-tenant design ACA that's why a tenant is separate it will create a, it will have all these um, you know, elements in it so let's create all these elements let's first create tenant so going towards the tenant tab over here these are the three uh, by default tenants so we'll just create a new one let's say create tenant and I'll just specify like a P R O D T E N A N T pro tenant I'm calling it just a pro tenant. I'm not configuring anything right now. So I'll just click on submit. It'll take me to the tenant tab. It this is now actually where I am is inside of this tenant. Okay, so uh, you can actually go ahead and see in networking tab you have bridge domains and VRFs. So if you look at this diagram, you can see the VRF and the bridge domain. So first let's create the VRF. Now the, for, for the VRF, just cl click on our create VRF here and just assign a name like PRD VRF and leave everything at default. Uh, click on next. Now uh, a, a, um, a VRF actually has to be binded to a bridge domain, okay? as per this flow it should be there inside okay so you have the option to create it here and i think it is essential to actually create it right now so i'll say P R O D B D. okay uh everything should be set to regular and everything okay just click on finish now i haven't assigned anything now what happened is that i created two things doing one thing i created two things this is how ACA actually works it does a lot of this like you're trying to create something and it knows that okay something needs to be there like a bridge domain should be binded to the vrf context so it does prompt you for the creation and that's a good thing uh to be really honest um but sometimes it doesn't i mean like it won't tell you ev any uh, like everything which is missing uh it will try to actually show you sometimes like navigate you sometime just as it did right now in the vrf side so if you drop down you can see the prod vrf has been created so it has been already binded to the bridge domain so the bridge domain has also been created check this out now if i want subnets like i want a specific subnet like uh, 10.1.1.222.254 uh, i need to create it in the subnets tab over here so i just right click it and say okay the git vip is actually the subnet so 10.1.112 dot okay 253 slash 24 okay so that's pretty much i'm not uh, you know like um checking any param parameters as of right now these things every single thing in itself is uh, it's a feature okay so i'm not actually going into that right now i'm just keeping it simple as i can but we will get into all of these details. For this lab only, I'm not going into that stuff. So I'll just click on submit. So we now, if you can look at there, we got the subnet. So all this part is done. That was quick, huh? So now we need to actually go and create an application profile and then endpoints. Now I just went through this really fast without even telling you what VRF content is. VRF is basically the routing table actually that will be associated with that bridge domain. So, uh, and then eventually you have those subnets. Now, uh, I'm not going into all those details uh, like uh, theoretical wise, what a VRF is and what a bridge domain is and how it works. Bridge domain is kind of analogous to, you could say VLAN in the modern uh, day world, I mean, but I'm not going into the specifics right now, but trying to like, tell you what it all is. Um, and if, if you don't get it, you can always leave a comment below and I'll make a video on that. Um, so uh, now we have, we've done all these things. VRF has been created, so our routing table has been created, L2 has been created, and a subnet has been created, right? Now it's time for application profile, just to give you an overview what the application profile is. Like if you have an application running in your environment like a web server, okay, for example, 
like a web service, something like that, or an email service, a more better example would be an email service that works on the web as well. So you might have multiple endpoint groups. Now, endpoint groups is basically, it's binding like-minded <laughs> endpoints to an endpoint group, like web endpoints get binded to a specific endpoint group that is called, that may be called web EPG or endpoint group, and the database service may be binded to another uh, EPG called the uh, database EPG. Now within the EPG, the communication is allowed, and in our environment, in our lab, it will be just one EPG. Let me just go back. It will be just one EPG over here uh, that will be binded. Um, one or we can do more than one, but for this lab, I think, judging by the time, I'll just create only one and test this out. Uh, because it, maybe we will be requiring some troubleshooting as well. So, okay, so to give you the concept again, that is the concept of endpoint groups. So like-minded like endpoints, like well, the, the functionality of those endpoints are the same. So the application profile is basically an umbrella that um, I have an email server and this is the web endpoints. These are the... Uh, database endpoints, blah, 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 whatever it is. So it gives you a very good score on if you have any problem with the communication or quality, quality service and all that stuff. If you have some problems, it will give you, if it will give the ACI a very good indication what is going on with the application. You get it? Because it's application centric uh, infrastructure, what the ACI is. So it's it's a logical container to be really precise. So let, let's go ahead and configure it. So, okay, so these are the application profiles, nothing over there. So I just create an application profile. For instance, I'll say, just to make you understand, like email app. I'll say email app is here. Okay, submit. So email app is now what we have done, we've created an application profile over here. Now we can create application EPGs, like uh, the APGs actually, the main EPGs. So I'll say, you know, like this is my web EPGs, EPGs. So a bridge domain must be defined in this. As you can see over here, the bridge domain uh, gets binded to the EPG. So we'll select that bridge domain and click on finish. Now you might have also other APGs, like you say, your, my email application, I would say, is working with the database service as well on the back end. So I'll say DB EPG, you get it? You get it what I'm trying to say, actually, just wanna put it out there because I'm going too fast creating this logical profile. So this email application is the application profile and it has two EPGs, right? So if there's any problem with these, it can give the ACI a score that, hey, your email application is not working very optimally. You had to, you gotta do something about it. So we'll get into that as well someday in some other video, not in this one. So let me just delete this EPG now. Let's just delete it, uh, this application profile right now. So I'll create a new one. I'll say VLAN triple one app profile okay now in that we will have an EPG we'll just call it VLAN triple one EPG okay and binding it with the bridge domain finish so here it is <laughs> now how do I get endpoints into an EPG that is the question one of those methods is that by static bindings. Like if a specific VLAN tag comes in, like uh, if we go to our topology, like if this guy, let me just grab my pen, this laser, where is it, laser pointer. Like whenever this switch sends like VLAN triple uh, one tag towards this port, what I want is you to actually listen uh, to that because I'm gonna recognize that VLAN because I have it in my, in my VLAN pool. You get it? Let me just bind one and I'll show you what I'm saying because it's hard to understand this way. So let me just statically bind the port. 
So deploy static EPG, port channel, or VPC. So here you can select the node. I'll select the node 101. That is the leaf node 1. And select the interface Ethernet 1 slash 32. Okay. And uh, the VLAN that I'll be listening on for this to, to put that endpoint in this EPG is triple one. What was it? Triple one. Yeah, okay. You get it, what I'm trying to say. Whenever a packet comes in to ACI with this VLAN tag, it'll put this in EPG, EPG VLAN triple one underscore EPG. You get it? That's one way actually to do uh, binding of endpoints towards an endpoint group. I'm sorry if I'm making this hard. I'm trying my best, you know, to this, all this is not easy to understand. So the um, deployment type is intermediate on or on demand. Immediate is basically it puts in the TCAM and the hardware and on demand basically it checks the first packet and then puts in the hardware. It's pretty much okay, whatever you want to select, but I normally select immediate. No need for uh, micro segmentation, uh, primary VLAN or that. Just the mode is trunk and we'll look into these modes in another video but for now it's only for trunk I'm, go I'm going for the trunk because that switch side is trunked so click on submit now we see that okay uh, it, no a anything that comes into this interface on VLAN triple one triple one <laughs> triple one I'm gonna put it in EPG triple one okay I should have named it something else man I'm doing a lot of triple triple one okay one piece we have missing and what is that before we go ahead towards the verifications part is that i haven't binded this epd to a domain and this is the last part okay if everything is working fine uh, everything has been binded perfectly then it should start working it should, it should start pinging but before we go into the ping part or the testing part or before i bind it to the domain i just want to show you what's happening on the switch level so let me just uh, restart the session. This is the layer three switch, right? So let me just check this also. Okay, let me check this switch real quick. I wanna see, does it, this is the, let me check you that, let me show you that. This is the switch, uh, L3 switch, okay? I'm just checking if this port is trunked and I have this VLAN and SVI is created or not. So show VLAN brief. Ah, the Google commands. So sure enough, we can see that triple one uh, is there and triple one, triple two, oh, double one, two, one, double one, three is there. Show IP interface brief. And VLAN triple one, all these interfaces have been defined with slash 24 bit subnet masks. And show, show run interface. What was it? Okay, it was gig. 3 slash 0, 0 slash 46, I believe. 46. Yeah, okay. So it's it's, it's uh, more just set to trunk. Okay, so looks good. Looks good. So show interface uh, gig 3 slash 0 slash 46 trunk should show me that all the VLANs are processing by. So looks everything looks great here. Now let's move on to our leaf which you've all been waiting for, uh, how it's gonna work. Now, um, let me just log in first. Okay, so there it is, there's the leaf. Now, uh, one thing I need to show you is that uh, show IP, it's not very interactive actually, this Nexus or this, this ACI OS. Show IP, show IP interest is brief. Um, right now, hey, you know what? Um, if I'm not wrong, this was from the previous tenant. No, it's showing me already. Hey, check this out. Did I configure triple one or double, triple, uh, double one two actually? Let me check that. It's already here. One second. Let me check the bridge domain quick, real quick and see. Oh, I configured it's already there so did it bind to the domain or what because i haven't binded it to the domain the cpg hmm but the vr have got already propagated that's interesting i wasn't uh, expecting that 
Okay, first of all, let me change this. I mean, just, just delete this. I don't think I can edit this. Yeah, I can delete only. Okay, let me delete this and add this subnet. 10.1.1.253.24. Okay, that's that's cool. I wasn't sure actually that it will be showing up that quickly over here. Let me just check it again because this is the part ten I created, right? So so you see the VRF gets down pushed. Uh, the tenant and the VRF gets down pushed towards the switch that needs it. If I go to um, switch two, I won't be seeing any VRF regarding that. Um, we'll check that later, but I won't be seeing any of this because I did not select one zero two for anything. But what I'm thinking is that can I ping it now? Because I haven't binded the domain. Let's check it out because I wasn't expecting this. 10.1.111.253. Let's check if it works. Because, oh, it's working. Really? Well, that's a bummer, uh, to be really honest. I should be really happy, but I was like, uh, hmm. It should have been binded to some domain. I'm not sure how it's working right now because I normally go into go into the application profile and go to domains and I bind it over here. Like uh, I bind the VM domain, physical domain, to this one and submit. Then it actually starts working. I'm not sure if you guys know how it started really to really work before I even binded it. That's cool. That's that's <laughs> cool by me. Cool, fine by me. If it's working, that's cr that's crazy. Now we have configured the ACI model for A to Z from the start to the end, and you have seen how we can tag a VLAN sitting on ACI. But to be really honest, you know now that you don't need to create the tenant again, not the VRF even, just need to put some subnets if you want to in the bridge domains. VLAN pool is already propagated, you can add more. It's not like that you have just hard coded to only three VLANs, you can add more. And um, one thing we have left out is these contracts and subjects or filters because it's for the inter uh, EPG communication. We will look into that in other videos, but now, for now we, we're not looking at that. But you've got a good understanding like how it's all done. But you might be overwhelmed right now saying that how on earth will I do this again and again? You don't need to actually do it again and again. You might need to just create an APG and bind the ports. Uh, on the back end, obviously, you can create a specific profile and match the nodes to like facilitate you in the future as well. So it really depends how you actually configure it. So it's like you configure it one time and you can reuse a lot of things. So this re reusability of ACI is the game, is the name of the game, to be really honest. So I hope uh, this was really informative for you and uh, I would like to thank you for viewing, man. And I'll, I'll keep you posted to more videos, uh, hopefully, um, once I make them. This was a hard one, actually. To be honest, I'm, I think it's too much time. But uh, thanks, thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me. Really appreciate it.